Locate the FB Multipeer application on your computer. Double click on the application to launch the software. Upon opening the application, the welcome screen will appear. In this tutorial, we'll investigate how to add and edit pile types within a default pile and cap model. In the process, we will cover how to add piles and soil sets to a model. Let's begin by selecting the new icon located in the top left corner of the program as shown. After selecting the new icon, FB Multipeer will prompt you to select the model type and desired units. In this tutorial, we will employ a default pile and cap model. After selecting the pile and cap model type, click OK to load your selection. After creating the default pile and cap model, the user interface will display four individual windows as shown here. The top left window, entitled Model Data, allows you to directly input analysis and design parameters for your model. The top right window, entitled Pile Plan View, provides a plan cross-sectional view of the foundation configuration at the pile cap midplane. Since we are working with the default pile and cap model in this tutorial, the four pile layout associated with the default pile and cap model is displayed. The bottom left window, entitled Soil Edit, displays the soil layering for the current selected pile. For the default pile and cap model, two sand layers are already predefined. Note that FB Multipeer employs distributed nonlinear springs to model the resistance provided by the soil and rock media. Finally, the bottom right window, entitled 3D View, displays a 3D view of the model. First, we will start by adding a new pile type to the model. To begin this process, navigate to the pile page within the model data window. Next, select edit to make changes to the default piles used in this model. This window entitled full cross-section pile properties will allow you to make alterations to geometric or material parameters of the piles used in this model. To add a new pile type to the model, click Add in the top left corner of the page as shown. You will know that you have successfully added a new pile type to the model when the pile type dropdown changes from type 1 to type 2. Now that we have added a second pile type to the model, we need to select which pile cross section we wish to assign to this pile type. To do so, select Retrieve Section. Here, the user is provided with several standard pile cross sections to choose from. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will investigate a 12 by 84 H pile cross section. Once you've selected your cross section, click OK to assign the selected cross section to the pile type we just created. So far, we have created a new pile type and assigned a cross section to it. Now, we need to assign the pile type to the relevant piles within the model. To demonstrate this, we will add two piles to the default pile and cap model. To assign piles to a cross section, start by right clicking in the pile plan view window. You'll be presented with a context menu that lists several model options for graphically interacting with the piles in the cap configuration. From these options, select add or remove piles. Now that we can add piles to the model, left click on the desired pile location within the pile plan view. In this tutorial, we will select piles near the left and rightmost portions of the cap. Notice that your location selection will be visually confirmed in the pile plan view window. The next step is to assign our new pile type to each of the piles we just added to the model. To do so, right click in the pile plan view window, then navigate to assign pile types to piles. Selecting this option will bring up a window that will allow you to decide which pile type to assign. Select the pile type drop-down menu and click on Type 2, which is the pile type we developed earlier in this tutorial. Now that we have selected which pile type to assign, we can assign this pile type to the piles we added earlier. Click on the piles of interest in the Pile Plan View window. Notice that these piles now take the shape of the H piles that we defined earlier. Additionally, pile type two is indicated above these piles. Click OK to confirm the, these selections. Since our pile cap is now composed of two different pile types, we need to assign unique soil sets to each pile. This is done out of necessity so that the program, the appropriate pile geometry is taken into account when forming the distributed nonlinear soil resistant springs to the piles. To begin this process, click on Soil 
under substructure. The soil window shown here provides you with control over the various parameters used during the analysis. To assign a second soil type to the newly added piles, select Add under Soil Layer Data. A window entitled Add Soil Set will pop up, allowing you to add a new soil set to the model. Confirm the addition of the new soil set by selecting OK. During this step, you may also edit the soil parameters that are assigned to the, this new soil set. Generally, if only the pile geometry is different, but all piles are founded in the same soil layering, then the approach of just copying the soil set properties can be taken. We will assume such for the purposes of this tutorial, and so soil set 1 and soil set 2 will contain the same input parameters while only the pile geometries differ. Now that our second soil set has been defined, we must assign it to the H piles. To do so, right click in the Pile Plan View window and select Assign Soil Sets to Piles. Selecting each of the two piles that we assigned as Type 2, or in other words, that we assigned as H piles, you'll notice that the pile soil set numbers change from 1 to 2 indicating that you've successfully added the new pot soil set to these piles. You may now run your analysis.